Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. This is the part 2 of testicular tumor series where we will be discussing about seminoma, a very important germ cell tumor. To begin with, we shall recollect the classification of testicular tumors and then we will understand in detail about the pathogenesis of germ cell tumor, finally moving on to understanding seminoma. So, let us recollect the classification of testicular tumors. This is WHO 2022 classification. We saw that it was classified into germ cell tumors and sex cord stromal tumors, right? Majority, that is around 90% of the testicular tumors are germ cell tumors. Further, germ cell tumors are subclassified into those which were derived from germ cell neoplasia in situ. And second category is unrelated to germ cell neoplasia in situ. If you are new to this video, you can go back to my earlier video and then understand in detail about the classification of testicular tumors. So, in today's session, I will be concentrating only on this germ cell tumor that is seminoma. So, let's quickly understand the general aspects of the germ cell tumors. See, these affect Caucasian males between ages 15 to 45 years of age and they are the most common cancer in this age group. Coming to the pathogenesis of germ cell tumors in general, it is broadly categorized into two important factors, one environmental factors and two genetic factors. The exposure to the pesticides and non-steroidal estrogens in utero itself, you know, leads to the development of something called testicular dysgenesis syndrome okay and um, what i mean to say is that these exposures are usually associated with testicular dysgenesis syndrome which means they are associated with cryptorchidism hypospadias and poor sperm quality and remember the cryptorchidism is associated with approximately around 10 percent of testicular germ cell tumors moving on to the genetic factors it is Observe that the seminomas or the germ cell tumors in general are four times higher than normal in fathers and sons of affected patients and around eight to ten times higher in case if they are affected, I mean, if the brothers are affected. There are lots of genetic variations which are observed. The most important one is variations in the gene KIT KIT, which is linked to the familial germ cell tumor risk. The second important gene is the BAK gene, which is a key, key player in apoptosis, right? Both of these genes are very crucial for the proper gonadal development. And that's why any abnormality in these genes are associated with the risk of development of germ cell tumors. So, moving on to understanding in detail about the pathogenesis of germ cell tumor, as we have understood right now, it is the cryptorchidism or the germline variants in the KIT are back or even the environmental exposures to those non-steroidal estrogens. what does that do? That results in, you know, the primordial germ cell having defect in the maturation in the form of arrest of differentiation. And this arrest of differentiation of these primordial germ cells is basically because of either of these factors or due to acquired genetic or epigenetic modification, which still can take place, can take place within the utero itself. Right. So, once there is arrest of maturation, remember in these cells there is any mutations in the KIT receptor tyrosine kinase. That leads to the growth factor signaling activation, which leads to the formation of germ cell neoplasia in situ. Remember, the germ cell neoplasia in situ is the pre neoplastic condition or the precancerous condition which arises in utero itself, but it stays dormant until puberty. So, what happens in puberty is various hormonal influences in the puberty that can stimulate the germ cell growth. Apart from these hormonal influences, if there are any events, for example, if there is any reduplication of the short term of the chromosome number 12, that can lead to the development of invasive germ cell tumor. 
So this is the pathogenesis of germ cell tumor. Now let us see in detail about the seminoma. What is seminoma? This is the most common type of germ cell tumor. Around 50% of these tumors, so 50% of all the germ cell tumors are seminomas. And the peak incidence of seminoma is in fourth decade of life. See, this is the male counterpart of this geminoma. We know that this geminoma is a identical tumor which arises in the ovary well, there's another term called germinoma which is basically a tumor which arises in the central nervous system usually in the midline structures similar tumor like that of seminoma for example in pineal gland okay that's called germinoma it's not that seminomas always occur in young adults it can also occur in children but that is a very rare occurrence for some unknown reasons there is a slight tendency towards the right testis as compared to that of the left. Around 2% of seminomas are bilateral, but not these tumors occur synchronously. They are almost always asynchronous in occurrence. Seminomas are often identified by the patient themselves okay, as they are you know, as swelling in the groin, they are associated with vague pain and discomfort of the testis or the groin or even the lower abdomen. Sometimes seminomas, particularly if they have metastasized, they can present with symptoms of metastasis, particularly when you know they can manifest with lower back pain. That could be the first presentation in less than 3% of individuals. Okay, and that's because of metastatic to the retroperitoneal region. Now, how seminomas can metastasize? It can metastasize via the lymphatics to the various groups of retroperitoneal lymph nodes or it can metastasize later into the mediastinal above the diaphragm or even cervical lymph nodes particularly the left supraclavicular group of lymph nodes very rarely seminomas can also manifest with paraneoplastic syndromes what are these they can present with polycythemia they can be ex I mean, they can manifest with exophthalmos and they also can manifest with autoimmune hemolytic anemia and even membranous glomerulonephritis. Remember, these are the paraneoplastic syndromes which can be associated with seminomas. Tumor markers can help in you know, diagnosis, particularly the serum tumor markers can also help in the diagnosis of seminomas, particularly the serum HCG levels, which are often elevated. Though elevated, it is not usually more than 1000 milli international unit per ml. This elevation is related to the proportion of sensitive trophoblastic cells in the seminoma itself. Clinically, seminomas can be staged as into stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3. Stage 1 tumors are the non-metastatic non tumors. You know, they are confined in the testicular parenchyma itself. Whereas stage 2 are the ones which metastasize the nearby lymph nodes, particularly the abdominal or pelvic, usually sub diaphragmatic lymph nodes. Whereas stage 3 seminomas, clinical stage 3 seminomas are the ones which are metastasized above the diaphragm or even systemic metastasis. So, this is how clinically seminomas can be staged. Macroscopically, they are often solid tumors which results in expansile enlargement of testis. Size can vary markedly, but the mean size is around 5 centimeters. If you can appreciate this, this is how the cut section of the seminoma looks like. They are solid, lobulated and multinodular on external surface. Cut surface is homogeneous. You can even see distinct nodularity here, which is cream color to tan, sometimes pale yellow to even pink. Cut section often bulges and then you can find areas of necrosis so these are the areas of necrosis okay and that's the hemorrhagic areas in a you know large tumors you can expect these areas of necrosis and hemorrhage predominantly they have a homogeneous cut surface of course nodular but then cream colored or tan colored surface so this is how the gross appearance of seminoma looks like this is an illustration of a uh, seminoma on microscopy where you can see that the tumor cells are often arranged in the form of diffuse sheet like arrangement which are separated by the fibrous septa and this fibrous septa you can see that there is extensive or mild moderate to extensive lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate that's a very characteristic feature in seminoma each of these cells are round to polygonal they are they, they characteristically have very clear to pale or eosinophilic cytoplasm 
on the nuclei is large central with the prominent nucleoli and often they have irregular nuclear membranes so this is how seminoma looks on microscopy I can quickly take you through this microscopic feature of seminoma in this virtual slide on path presenter see this is the tumor and that's the normal testicular parenchyma so at this magnification you can identify that these are the seminiferous tubules and that is the tumor you can make out that there is a fibrous septa which separates these nodules or lobules of tumor cells and this fibrous septa contain lots of lymphocytes and plasma cells and individual tumor cells are large polygonal large nucleus centrally placed prominent nucleoli and in this case you find lots of you know clear to pale cytoplasm so that's a very classical picture of seminoma one of the easiest slides for you students to write is seminoma right all you can all you have to write is these lobules of tumor cells which are large round, round polygonal and then write these fibrous septa infiltrated with lymphocytes and plasma cells it is not unusual to find ill formed granulomas in the parenchyma the immunohistochemically they are positive for kit oc3 or 4 and even podoplanin and they are often negative for cytokeratin so how do you treat seminomas seminomas remember they are the most radio sensitive and chemosensitive and that's why seminomas among all the germ cell tumors have the best prognosis stage 1 and stage 2 seminoma they are often you know, 95% cure rate only by orchidectomy with or without chemotherapy or radiotherapy whereas stage 3 seminoma they are often subjected to multiple doses of platinum based chemotherapy even then the survival rate is better than the other germ cell tumors or even the mixed germ cell tumors which i'll be discussing in my subsequent sessions so that's all for today's session we did discuss about the pathogenesis of germ cell tumors and then we looked into the various aspects of seminoma thank you for watching if you have like this video hit the like button do comment if you have anything to ask or if you find this video useful do not forget to subscribe and please do share if you find this video useful bye